Two guys not related, yet somehow are given the same name. It's time for the Two Daves podcast, where we'll answer the age-old question, are two Daves better than one? And now, here's Dave and Dave. Welcome back to the Two Daves Nation, where the two Daves do all their stunts, but never intentionally. Hey, I'm Dave. And I'm the other day. Please make sure you subscribe on YouTube and click that bell to remind you every week when a new Two Daves podcast is out. Uh, but we're, we're available on all the podcasting sites that are out there, Apple, Spotify, you name it. We're there. And hopefully, if you are listening to this via YouTube, you are able to actually see us. Uh, hey. and that will really make your day, I'm sure. Yeah. So where is you name it at? Is it youNameIt.com? Is you where name we it go to? Com. Okay. All right. I hope I hope there isn't a youNameIt.com. Oh, I, I know. I Me. I hope I haven't just you know endorsed a website that's not good. Yes, I know. I know. Hey, Dave, it's uh, time for our two days fact of the day, and today our sponsor is she said no used wedding rings. That's right. Way too many ladies have said a resounding no to wedding proposals only to leave the boyfriend scarred for the rest of his life. So why not let his pain be your gain? She <laughs> said, no used wedding rings, his loss, your gain. And now the two Dave's fact of the day. Even though Fruit Loops are different colors, they all have exactly the same flavor. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I huh? knew that. Were you aware of that? I, I, I was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because um, I think I even long time ago did a taste test myself and realized this is bogus, man. It's yeah. not different. So it's kind of like M and M's, you know, different colors yeah. but all the same flavor. Right, well, Dave. <laughs> yes. How do I ask this question? Have you ever okay. been embarrassed? Yeah. Yeah. How do you handle embarrassing situations? <clears throat> First, my face gets all red. Uh huh. And then I look around to make sure um, nobody's seen what I just did. And if I do see people, I run for the border. <laughs> yeah. You know, all unfortunately, life is full of embarrassing moments. And you wish that you wish that you could just go back and redo them so that you didn't have to live those embarrassing moments. But honestly, the truth is, we all have to, we all experience them. So, yeah. you know, that helps. But we're going to discuss a very interesting list of the most embarrassing moments in a person's life. And we're just going to see if either one of us has experienced any of them. Okay. Well, this, this should be fun because I don't know. We've probably experienced a lot of this and lots that aren't even on this list. But yeah. well, uh, here's the number one. Okay. When parents bring up childhood memories that are embarrassing moments to people who you wish never would have known. Has that yes. ever happened to you? Oh, Dave, I'm an only child. <laughs> and, and I'm a pastor and I love my parents to death, but sometimes they talk about, oh man, they talk about those moments of my childhood life or teenage years. And I'm just like, I always have to say, that's who I used to be, not who I am today. So what about you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My mom still likes to do that. Still likes to talk about, you know, times, that, you know, when I was a kid or whatever, and uh, that, that were embarrassing anyway, but then she has to bring them up again. Yeah, it is. It, it can be embarrassing. Okay. Well, here's the sad reality, Dave. I think we probably do that to our kids. Oh, I guarantee it. Yeah. It's a rite of passage. It is. My it mom is. and my dad uh, tell embarrassing stories about me. So, yep, now I can do that to my kids. Yeah. Now, this next one, I don't want you to start crying, okay? Okay. But it's getting ditched by a date before the date was supposed to be over. And I guarantee you, you with your sidekick, you know, what was, what was the dummy's name? Jerry. Well, uh, Jerry, I, I had one called Hobie. Yeah. Had one yeah. called Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Did that ever happen to you? No, actually, that's that that has never happened. Yeah. I have uh I, I remember one time when I was in college, I asked a girl on a date. 
I asked what, well, and it was just, just an, an informal thing. I just asked her if she wanted to go to lunch with me. And she, this is, this was her reply. And I'm telling you 30, however many years later, I remember this. She goes, uh, <laughs> I'm what I'm busy. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. All right. Uh, well, I have to tell you something. I remember there was a girl at our church and I, you know, I was young. I was probably junior high. Okay. And I finally got the nerve up to ask her to be, you know, to be my girlfriend. And she said, yes, this was on a weekday night. Oh, so what, uh, what breed was her seeing eye dog? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, onward. Um, so it had to be, let's just say it was a Tuesday, Wednesday night, probably because it was at church and we have a youth group. Okay. So I asked her the next day we're at school and it was in the morning and uh, I was telling some of my friends, I said, Hey, I got a new girlfriend and, you know, and they told me, one of them told me, well, we already heard she broke up with you. <laughs> 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 oh my oh. that's embarrassing yes it was yeah. i also cried myself to sleep that night but oh dave i'm sorry yeah girls yeah. girls are the worst mm, they are the worst they are and and i have three of them but anyway yeah. well yeah. here's the number three one the number three most embarrassing moment in people's lives is accidentally letting one slip out if you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, has that ever happened to you? <laughs> uh oh, something tells you you got a story to tell. Uh, I can, Dave. I have to save face on here, so you know I'm sorry, but yeah. And the older you get, you know, it seems like that happens. <laughs> but to I taught a Sunday school class, uh -oh. and I stood up, and you know. It happened, and sitting right next to me was one of our board member ladies. <laughs> and I looked down. As soon as it happened, I looked down the chair, and I said, that stupid chair. And, uh, <laughs> and we were at the – we had a bowling. We used to do a bowling night, Sunday nights, and she's, she came up to me, and she goes, that wasn't the chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for pointing that she out. She was a really? school teacher. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What about you, Dave? Oh, I'm sure it has. You know, I, I remember, I'm reminded of uh, of an incident that happened in the national news maybe a couple of years ago. There was a senator, and I believe his name was Eric Swalwell, and he was running for president at the time. And he was being interviewed, I believe, by somebody in the news, and he let one go during the interview. And then he later on tried to say, no, I was moving the coffee on the table. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. I remember that one. I tell you what, I've been talking and all of a sudden I burped and it came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, well. OK. Num number four is tripping in front of people. Oh, that's like my middle name. Have yeah. you tripped in front of people? Oh, many times. And what do you do? What's the first thing you do? You, you, you look back. You look back at what you tripped over. See, oh, that's a stupid thing. Yeah. And then what do you look for? People who are may possibly <laughs> yeah. see who watched it. Yeah. Yep. You know, you were smiling at me that first time. You know, yeah. you asked me about how I handle embarrassment. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, there have been times when I've, you know, trip going up on the stage, you know, at church oh, or trip get going off. I don't even preach on the stage anymore. I just get right down the floor because I'm going to fall. I'm going to do something embarrassing. I've knocked over mic stands. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. That is a nightmare for me. Well, here's so. another one. Uh, number five, getting stage fright. Is that well, a you're theatrical, theater? right? You've been in theater yeah. mm -hmm. all your life. So have you ever gotten stage fright? Never. Wow. Never. Uh, now, I'm a preacher. You are a preacher. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in high school, college, I can remember community college, I took speech class. And I remember getting up there one time. First of all, I probably dry heaved or threw up right before I had to speak. 
Really? And I got up there and I'm like, I just couldn't get going. And then I finally did. How God called me to preach. And then, you know, that's it's crazy. But I'm never like super comfortable in front of people. I mean, I have to, you know, maybe that's a good thing. Well, I, you know, I've been nervous before. And somebody asked me a number of years ago, all right, you, you certainly, you aren't nervous anymore when you preach. You've been doing it for so long. And I said, oh, oh no, I'm always nervous. And I want to be. I want to have, I don't yeah. ever just want to be so confident, like, eh, because then I'm going to really flop, you know? Right, right. There's a difference between nervousness and stage fright. And I, I, I can't ever remember having stage fright that would cause me to, you know, vomit or have diarrhea or anything like that. But yeah, I'm right. nervous, yeah. Well, you know, if we are going to be, this is all dependent on my son if he can do it hopefully you're watching us okay not just hearing us you i get it you're hearing us on the podcasting sites but if you're on youtube you can watch us um if it's working out here but i i have to admit going from audio only to video uh, what if i pick my nose you know what if i do you know what i'm saying yeah yeah. I have all those things going in my mind now. I'm too old for that. Because after 30 episodes with you, some of the things oh. that I've seen you do, I'd be a little nervous Man. too. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, I talk about picking my nose and now my nose itches. So, okay. <laughs> all right, here, here's a good one. And I'm sure you've done this as well as I have. Laughing at the wrong time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a laugher anyway. Yeah. And uh, so consequently, it, it's hard for me to not laugh at inappropriate times. You remember my wife's grandmother's stories that I told you, right? Yeah. She she loved me, I know, but she really made it tough for me at times. You're the center of attention and blah, blah, blah. When my brother-in-law was carrying in her $30 uh, dessert that she made every week, every year for Christmas, um, it was snowing outside. He fell, and when he when he fell, it shattered some of it and whatever. I was laughing my head off, and she looks at me and she goes, "It's not funny, you know." And whatever else she said, and I'm like, "Oh, it is funny." <laughs> it is. You just don't appreciate the humor. No. Yeah. No. Well, uh, no. what about saying a wrong name to someone you see in public? Oh, I did that yesterday. You did it yesterday, really. So have you heard of acai bowls at all? Heard of what? It's acai bowls. They are, um, they are like uh, a fruit type of thing, you know, and in it you get mixed berries and bananas and granola and agave. It's, oh, it's really good. It's from a truck. Where, it's where a have I been? Truck. I don't know, but it's awesome. Huh. So I'm going up there and I'm thinking the girl who's running, I know the names, Melissa and, and Sequoia. So if you're listening, I'm so sorry. And uh, I was with my wife and I go up to her and I go, uh, not Melissa and Sequoia. It's, uh, oh, see, I just did it again. Melissa's the mom. Alexis is the girl. And I'm like, so where, where's Alexis or where's, uh, yeah, hey Alexis, where's the the your brother's um girlfriend at that's that's with that's that's Sequoia. That was Sequoia I was talking to. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, it happens. And you know, I'm always afraid it's gonna happen. I'm always afraid that I see somebody that I, I'm not I'm not really that well acquainted with. Yeah. And I'm afraid I'm gonna call them by the wrong name, even though I'm sure that that person's name is such and such. Man, I tell you what, I'm just going to really blow it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, what's what's kind of funny is, is it Jim Gaffney? No, it's Brian Regan, one of our favorite comics. Yes. He talks about not knowing people's name and they yeah. know your name. Hey, buddy. Partner. Yeah. It happens. Bu buckaroo. <laughs> yeah. My name's not partner. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's funny. Yeah. Is it my turn? No. Yeah. No, it's your turn. Yeah. No, number eight is you. Oh, okay. It is. Asking a about a woman's pregnancy who's not pregnant. Now, I've never done that. And 
and I, there's a reason for that. I don't want to be, I don't want to be embarrassed and I don't want to embarrass her. I don't care if the woman is obviously pregnant. I don't ask. There's just questions that I just don't ask. Okay. I have the same, same take that you have. Really? One time there's, there's a gal that I just know from Planet Fitness and, you know, she's, she's getting big. And uh, she's like, why didn't you say anything? I'm pregnant. I'm, I'm just three weeks. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Okay. None of my business. No. <laughs> no. All, All right. right. Well, here's number nine. Sending yeah. a personal text <laughs> to your spouse, if you know what I'm talking about, and then realizing that you didn't send it to your spouse, you sent it to somebody else. Have you ever done that? Uh -uh. Like, I love you, um, you're looking good today, and it goes to somebody else. Yeah. Or my wife, just maybe a week or two ago, she told somebody, hey, I love you, uh, looking forward to seeing you tonight. She was at work. <laughs> she sent it to the wrong person. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Your wife does not know how to send a text to the right person. <laughs> she has sent me a number of texts that were meant for you, nothing personal or anything, but it was just obviously not meant for me. And I'm like, dude, I know. Do you know the difference between Dave P and Dave M? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Hey. Hey, Dave. but if I laugh, I'm laughing at the wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's not embarrassing. That's just, then there are fighting words right there. So. <laughs> that's right. Hey, listen, I, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. I've totally forgot to say this ain't tacos. So there you go. Hey, you're listening to the Two Days Podcast, Dave. and this ain't tacos. Dave. 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 What? 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 But you're wrong once again. What do, you, what do you mean? This podcast is devoted from here on out to tacos. So what? Okay, wait a minute. Let, let me get this straight. What you're saying is, this is tacos? Yes, tonight. And only tonight. This we're is tacos. Doing, yes, tonight we're doing a total uh, episode on tacos. We thought it would be fun to look to just do what we always say. It's, this ain't tacos, but we're going to make it about tacos. It sounds like a fun idea, right? It does. And you know what? Surprisingly, this is going to be an interesting episode. Because there's a lot to be said about tacos. First of all, now this, this surprised me, but tacos are really, really old. Uh, there, there's I've actually some, some debate uh, over when exactly the first taco was created. But most experts state that the first taco was actually invented somewhere between 1000 and 500 BC. And I had that taco at Taco Bell. <laughs> well you know what we read the bible dave and i i think this probably comes from manna tacos right <laughs> manna tacos yeah sure yeah right why not i know i know well however the name taco came much later on dave the first recorded reference of the word taco uh, then it was taco, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but I think it's Mineros. Yes. Came about in the 19th century. So the first mention of the word taco in the United States didn't happen until 1905. So it's just a little over 100 years old, that word yeah. in the English. Yep. And when they first became popular in Mexico, they were served in a silver mine. At the time, they were thin sheets of paper wrapped in gunpowder. <laughs> now, you want to talk about spicy. <laughs> you want to talk about the problem of letting one slip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you what, those things got to bang. Fine today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, another interesting fact is that, and this isn't surprising, but Americans eat a ton of tacos. Oh, I can believe that. Well, according to nationaltacoday.com, Americans are eating billions of tacos every year. 4.5 billion to be more specific. Wow. Yeah. Well, 
Dave, can you ever eat just one taco? No. No. And it's obvious that when you go to a Mexican restaurant or, or it's Taco Bell or wherever, mm -hmm. I don't know that you can order just one taco. You know, whenever you order tacos, they come in multiples. True. And I think, you know, it's, it's because of our appetite that <laughs> there's so many that are more that are sold. Yeah. But Americans not only love tacos, but they also love their Taco Bell. Um, actually, around half of the U.S. population visits a Taco Bell once every 11 days. Okay, stop there, Dave. Do you like Taco Bell? Yeah, I do, actually. I can't stand Taco Bell. And my wife, you will not get her to go to a Taco Bell. And there's good reason no. for that, which I won't go into right now. Oh, well, I don't. Don't like it. Don't you like, like it. Taco John's. I like Taco John's. I if we're talking about chains, okay? Yeah. But, you know, remember Ricardo, who we had on our, I think our second episode, was yeah, it? Yeah, so first, first or second, yeah. And I always give him a bad time. Now, in our town here, there are a ton of Mexican restaurants that are very good. Authentic, right? Yeah, authentic. And I always tell him, I said, you know, I'm just hungry for an authentic um, taco tonight. Do you want to go with me? He goes, yeah, that sounds good. I said, good. I said, because I think Taco John's is Taco Tuesday today. And he just looks at me because he's, you know, he's Hispanic, of course. And uh, he just shakes his head at me. But I do like that. I like, I like them. Yeah, I do too. But, and yeah. I don't mind, I don't mind Taco Bell, but I understand why, you know, but anyway, speaking of Taco Bell. Okay. Uh, the chain actually started in 1954 as a burger stand. Hmm. But then the they burger. started, yeah. But they they started selling hard tacos eventually because they were in his they were in a Hispanic neighborhood. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about Taco Bell later on here. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the next one is that the biggest taco ever was. I'll just say this: huge. Mm -mm -mm. Biggest taco ever made was constructed. Now, whenever you say constructed, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not that's not making just a couple. That's okay. Get out your ladders and hammers. Yes, that's right. It was constructed on November twentieth, two thousand eleven, in Mexico, and I cannot pronounce the name. Sorry. Okay, it was two hundred and forty six feet long. Wow. And it was made with carnitas as the filling. You know what? I could handle being taking part of that taco. Man. Doesn't that sound incredible? Wow. There was a lot of people that had nothing else to do with their life, for right. sure. You know, we used to do, for our uh, kids camps that we would do in the summer, we'd make a 100-foot-long banana split. Yeah. And buddy, that's a lot of ice cream. I yeah. can imagine what a 246 foot long taco would look like. Oh, Unbelievable. Uh, a lot of lettuce, a lot of cheese. Ooh. Yeah. And a lot of roll aids for sure. And a lot of roll aids, right. Well, did you know that there is a national taco day? See. Si. Yeah, see. Si. Yeah. It's, it's there's national taco, taco day to celebrate tacos, and it is October 4 every year. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, Dave. Did you know that? I did not. I didn't either. I'm just yeah. giving you a, I didn't know there's a national I, talk today. I'm not surprised. You know, there's a national day for everything, but you know, I, I'm not surprised. And, you know, a lot of people, I think you even referred to it uh, as well. A lot of people now look at Tuesdays as taco Tuesdays. Yeah. They'll either have tacos at home or they'll go to a Mexican restaurant or to, to a knockoff like Taco Bell or something like that. Well, if you want a good deal on tacos, Cinco de Mayo is a huge day in Mar in our town here that is great for getting lots of tacos for a cheap price. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, did you know the word, what the word taco means, Dave? Well, I always thought that the word taco wasn't really translatable into English. It, whenever you, uh, whenever I've tried to translate it, it always just says taco. So, that's right. It means light lunch. It means light lunch. Yeah. Yeah. They've never, they've other... never seen me eat tacos. <laughs> I know. I know. Now there's some other translations, just like you say, but it just, okay, we're going to say, I'm going to say these and you tell me if 
you would go have one of these, okay? Would you have one if it was called a plug? <laughs> or no. a wad? Wad? <laughs> no. So that's why light lunch translation is probably the best. It seems uh, really a bit odd considering mo most people got to have at least uh, four to eight tacos to, yeah. you know. Yeah. So we feel better as long as we're eating, as long as we know that taco means light lunch, we feel better about eating a hundred of them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Well, also uh, a kind of a newer modification on the taco is the taco truck yeah and the taco the first taco truck was in new york not in mexico but in new york today you can find taco trucks all over the country of course but the first taco truck originated in new york in 1966 the truck didn't even have a full kitchen but it was mostly used for catering hmm. i find that interesting maybe a parallel between tacos the taco truck and you being born that year. You know what? I think it had a lot to do with it and the Super Bowl as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. All right. You guys that are listening can insert your own joke there. I just set it up nicely. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, next... and I just crashed it for you. <laughs> the next one is that tacos first came to America thanks to San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas. So what, at the Alamo, they had a taco stand? Or what? <laughs> they were, hey, hey, I'll have a taco, please. <laughs> okay, Davy Crockett. Yeah, private, go get me some tacos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in 1905, uh, we said that that's the first term taco came to yeah. America, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Tacos found their way to the United States because um, uh, Mexicans were starting to move into the United States thanks to the San Antonio Chili Queens. They the opened. Queens. Yes, I'm hungry just listening to that. So is that kind of like is that kind of like a Dairy Queen except it was chili? I I don't know, but they opened their own food stand in in the city of. Uh, San Antonio, and I guess the rest is history. Wow. Yeah, interesting. Well, here's, a, here's another fact about tacos. Do you know that there is a right time of day to eat tacos? What time is it right now? It, 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 right, right now, according to my clock, it's 8.50 p.m., and I think now's the right time. Now's the right time. I agree. Well, all, although I got to tell you, though, Dave, yeah. now that I'm 55, yeah. there comes a time Yes, there does. And I need to lay off. Yes, I'll take a taco without the meat and without the sauce and without yeah. the cheese, please. Now, at nine in the morning, I can start in. But yeah. after after six or seven in the evening, it's time to lay off. But I, anyway, for most people like us, any time of day is the right time of day to eat tacos. But there actually truly is a specific taco time. According to Mexican tradition, seafood tacos are meant to be eaten at lunch, mm. while antojitos are to be eaten at dinner time. And then there's such a thing as the Indiana taco, which was created by Dan Quayle, and those are available at 10 p.m. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Now, at, now does he a taco with an O or an O-E-S? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Right. Now I have a question. Yeah. Uh, do you uh, do you like seafood tacos? I love seafood tacos. Do you know what? I've never had a seafood taco. Really? I I would I, I've always wanted to try a shrimp taco or fish taco. I can't bring myself to do it. I just uh, can't. Well, if it's done right, the fish is done right, and it's if it's like a mahi mahi or a grouper, those are great. And I love shrimp tacos as well well you know when we go down to florida day we eat a lot of those mom and pop places sure and, and it's oh good stuff huh. okay. good stuff yeah well um th let's talk about the seven best fast food chain tacos there's there's actually a, a seven fast food chain list it sells tacos from america only we have those top seven best tacos 
served by a fast food chain. You understand this is not the seven best chains, but it's the seven best taco deals that you can get from a fast food chain. Yeah. Are you ready? Here's but, number okay. seven. But, but just make sure that this is covers all of America. Yes. So you might not know, right? So these yeah, are you might not be familiar with necessarily with all these. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number seven is Burger King's crispy taco, which you can get for only a dollar. They started selling them in 2001 all the way through 2020. So I'm not even sure you can get a crispy taco anymore then. Hey, did you ever have a crispy taco from Burger King? No, I, I can count the number of times I've been to Burger King on one hand. I love the crispy taco from Burger King. Was it good? Oh, when I lived in Kansas and uh, we lived in, you know, where we lived and, and they had a Burger King there, it was good. Oh, okay. Well, it's not authentic. It's just a fast yeah. food type of thing. Yeah. You know? All right. Yeah. So number six, which I just found this out, Hardee's and Carl Jr.'s, we figure is the same thing. Yes. But the reality is they just split. Not too long ago. Oh, really? So their own entities. But the sixth best deal is um, best taste for a fast food is Carl Jr.'s. And they have the, the green burrito menu. And it's the crunchy beef taco. It's $2. And they started selling this in the early 1990s. And um, I, that sounds good. I bet it you does. Good. It does. Crunchy beef taco. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, number five is Jack in the Box, uh, which is another another way of saying diarrhea. Yes, and uh, the Jack in the Box has a taco. It's $1.29 for two tacos. It's the only taco on Jack in the Box's menu aside from the mini tacos. And tacos have been served at Jack in the Box since the early 1950s. Yeah. You know, when the fast food chain lets one slip out, it comes out in the form of Jack in the Box. Yeah, 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 that's right. So I don't mean to be crude, but I won't, I won't go there. Okay, no. number four, yours and mine, Taco John's. TJ's. Crispy Taco. Oh, love it. It's priced at $2. It's... Uh, crazy that a taco served from a chain that began in the late 60s uh, in Cheyenne, Wyoming took off as much as it has. Uh, yeah. No, I, I prefer Taco John's over Taco Bell. Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime. Well, next would be El Pollo Loco's Chicken Taco Al Carbon. Hmm. It's $1.99. Started in northern Mexico in 1975, but the first American El Pollo Loco which, by the way, means the crazy chicken. Mm, yeah. It opened in L.A. in 1980. Mm, that sounds good. It does. I've never been there. Do you like chicken tacos? Yeah. Yeah, I do. No, I do too. The crazy okay. chicken. Yeah. Well, number two kind of surprised me. I thought this would be number one. But Taco Bell, Crunchy Taco, its price is one twenty nine. Again, as you mentioned earlier, Taco Bell has been selling this taco since 1951. Well, number one is the Del Tacos, and that's what they call it, the Del Taco. It's $1.59. Del Taco opened up in 1964. They sold tacos for 19 cents. But now you can get their Del Taco for $1.59. Hmm. Now, I watch certain podcasts, I know more than you do, Dave. And yeah. There was a food. There was a food segment that they were doing. They were taking all the the fast food chain tacos from Los Angeles area, and the the Del Taco was one of them. Oh, really? Okay. And wow. It well, you know, when I was in uh, this has been several years ago now, but I was in the uh, Branson area. This was actually in Ozark, Missouri. Yeah, and I saw a little hole in the wall restaurant called El Taco, mm. and I didn't go because there's something about the name El Taco that makes me think. First of all, it probably isn't authentic. Secondly, it probably isn't any good. I don't know, so I didn't go. Well, we have a place, and I don't know if you've ever ate it. It's called the Tasty Taco. I have. I remember Tasty Taco. Yeah. Oh man, I love their shells. They're deep, deep fat fried shells. 
and they're oh, they're so good. And don't they have don't they have the tongue burritos? I don't know if they have them there, but all of our authentic places here do. They're great, and right. and head, tongue and head, cheek, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, let's get to Taco Bell's. You know, we've been talking about all the Taco Bell stuff, and Taco, 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 Taco Bell. Yes, Yo Quiero Taco Bell. Remember That's that? Fun for the border. Yes. We hope there's a bathroom at the border. <laughs> I always laugh at IHOP. Uh, one of my favorite. I think I probably shared this before, but I'm going to do it again. The reason why they call it IHOP is because after you eat their food, you're hopping to the bathroom as fast. <laughs> oh, oh. Dave, Dave, I've eaten with you many places. Any place to be called IHOP. <laughs> you're well, in there. Hey, let me tell you, there is a there is a Mexican food place called Run to the Border or Run for the Border. Have you seen that? No. And that's all I think of, man. I'm going to eat the food and I'm going to be running my head off to try and find them. <laughs> okay, so here's some facts, um, you know, maybe interesting. But let me just kind of give you some, some background. Before Taco Bell, founder Glenn Bell created a fast... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. His name was Glenn Bell. Yeah, and that's something. So that's why he named it Taco Bell. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. I did yeah. not know that. I, it's cool how you make that connection there, Dave. So that's All that's right, Dave. Just continue. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, and and I want our listeners to recognize how Dave methodically uh, took the one piece of information and then you know he put it to the next and. Ah, the the light bulb went out. What it are we talking out. about? Okay, let's go on. Okay, so now, anyway, I have a question. Taco John's is that is the founder of that of that place? Is he named John, or is that just that's where you have to go when you've eaten that the tacos? <laughs> when we do that, this is tacos part two. I'll let you look up that information. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So founder Glenn Bell created this fast food joint, Taco Tia. Okay. Taco no, I remember Taco Tico. Do you remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's still around. Oh, is it really? Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. I haven't seen a Taco Tico yeah. for years. Yeah. So, but that one uh, offered ha uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, milkshakes, and tacos. Dude, I'm hungry. And, oh, man. And they saw the success of the tacos. And so Glenn Bell eventually launched Taco Bell in 1962 in Downey, California. Wow. So okay. in its early days in the 1960s, Taco Bell menu offered a limited number of options, including tacos, burritos, frijoles, tostados, tostadas, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not good at pronouncing these things. Each of them- I won't, I won't shame you, Dave. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> Each of them- each item cost only 19 cents. Oh, man. Yeah. That was the day, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Well, this you might find interesting. Taco Bell was the first fast food chain to hire women as managers. Wow. Uh, and also, as the face of Taco Bell in the late 1990s and early 2000s, everybody knows about the Chihuahua Gidget, who popularized the line, Yo quiero Taco Bell used in a number of commercials and ad campaigns. Did you also know it was in the movie Legally Blonde? In what movie? Legally Blonde. Oh, no, I didn't see that movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was in, the same, wait a minute. So that was Reese Witherspoon, right? I think so. She had it, she carried a dog around and that was the same yeah. dog that was in the Taco yes. Bell commercials? Yes. Really? No, I did not know that. And well, you learn a lot, Dave. You know, when you tune into the Two Dave's podcast, it's it is amazing what you will learn. It is. It is educational. Something. Man. <laughs> in 2011, an Alabama law firm sued the fast food giant Taco Bell, claiming its tacos only had 35% beef. Mm. Now that made me think about the time that they were people were wanting to sue Subway because they said their foot long subs were not uh, twelve inches; they were only ten and a half inches. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. Yes, 
Yes. So Taco Bell, they shot back with a full page ad retorting the accusation. As the facts rolled out, Taco Bell's beef was found to have 88% beef and 12% get this secret recipe. <laughs> secret recipe. Yes. Well, you know what? It's that 12% that might keep me from ever eating there again. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> oh my all right well there was a 1968 photo that reveals the band credence clearwater revival you know ccr yeah they stopped at taco bell and more recently macaulay culkin has been spotted lunching at the fast food joint even alone on christmas day wow. he was not home alone he was at taco bell alone what well, that would be a great follow up it would be home alone part 12 or 13 yeah. i can't remember but wow you know that's sad though macaulay culkin arguably back in the early 90s the most famous child star eating all by himself on christmas day at taco bell mm. huh okay mm. fame and fortune yep didn't get him anywhere okay and you know what maybe maybe he enjoyed that yeah, maybe he did. Yeah, maybe he did. Uh, as a marketing ploy, these are getting better, Dave. Yeah. Taco Bell launched a full page print ad announcing it was purchasing the Liberty Bell. Did you know that? No, I don't remember that. So this ad was published on April 1, 1996. April Fool's Day. Yep. By that's correct. By noon that day, Taco Bell announced that the ad was a joke, of course, because of April Fool's Day, and that the Liberty Bell was never for sale. But that didn't stop. Oh, no, that didn't stop the angry protesters from swarming a number of Taco Bell locations. Ultimately, Taco Bell, this is what they had to do. They pledged to pay $50,000 for the upkeep of the monument at an attempt to calm the angry American consumers. Oh, you know, I have a couple of things to say about that. <laughs> I have many more. First of all, Taco Bell, you and I have been in the same situation, and that is we've tried to, we've tried to make a joke and it backfired on us. Yes. Secondly... How many Karens does it take to sue Taco Bell? Now, you know, my Aunt Karen, <laughs> bless her heart, she's got to hear that all the time. Karen, I, she got on there once. She goes, hey, my name's Karen. Yes, I remember that. That's what we're talking about. And it also reminds me, there was a woke generation back then. Yeah, that's right. Oh, there always have been. There always have been people like that. My Well, goodness. in 2001, when Russia's Mir space station deorbited and was headed to crash in the Southern Pacific Ocean, Taco Bell, I think this is cool, they set up a floating target. And the target read, free taco here. Because they said if even a fragment of the station landed on the target, Taco Bell promised every person in the United States one free taco. <laughs> but unfortunately for Americans, none of Mir landed on the target. They're geniuses, really. Yeah, that is a good marketing ploy. Now, hey, I, I must say, I don't remember that. Do you? I don't. No, I don't. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 2010, oh my, this gets better, Dave. I can't believe this. In 2010, Taco Bell wrote the Federal Reserve a request to start printing $2 bills again in an effort to promote their $2 menu and rally the nation around the power of the $2 bill. <laughs> you know what? I'm a part of me is a little disappointed that the federal reserve denied that request or ignored it. I'm not sure which happened, but that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Have you ever had $2 bill Dave? Yes. I have a $2 bill in my possession now. Yeah. You ever thought about going to a fast food restaurant that has a $2 day and giving them $2? I have never thought about that. Anyway, <laughs> the success sparked from the wildly popular menu item allowed Taco Bell to employ more than 15,000 new workers in 2012, the company claimed. 
It propelled Taco Bell's popularity, outgrowing Pizza Hut, KFC, and even McDonald's. And it took food designers and engineers two years and 40 different recipes to create the Doritos Loco Taco. And if you remember seeing the movie, The Blind Side, remember that? Yep. Which was about the Tui family, true story about the Tui family who adopted the young uh, homeless uh, black kid that Michael, to, Michael Orr, the yep. football player. Well, Sean Tui, uh, and it brings this out in the movie, Sean Tui owned like about 80, he and Leanne owned about 80 Taco Bells as well as KFCs and a couple other franchises. But yeah, they made a ton of money. I think they still own them actually. Yeah, we so need anyway, to bring them on the two podcasts. We should Dave. do that. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be fun. Write that down. That would be great. I understand that uh, Leanne too is a lot like Sandra Bullock portrayed her in the movie. That would be fun. All right, that would be real fun. You know, for a family of four, this is how much it costs: fourteen dollars for you to make tacos at home. Fourteen dollars. Okay. Stop, Dave. Stop. Do you make tacos at home? Yes, we do. Okay, and how many do you? I mean, you had a big family, so, you know, going out to eat is not cheap. Oh, no, no. Okay, so how much does it cost? Yeah, well, that's, that's four tacos a person, and it can cost $24 for 16 tacos at Taco Bell. So you, you, can, save, you can save yourself quite a bit of money. But with anything, you can save yourself quite a bit of money by making them at home. And I'm telling you, my wife is an incredible cook anyway. So we love tacos. Uh, you know, I, I wish that every Tuesday was Taco Tuesday at our house, but she doesn't do that. Well, plus, Dave, yeah, she is a great cook. I agree. Yeah. And my wife can make a good taco. We love doing fajitas and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah. But I guarantee you, you compare homemade tacos to fast food chain tacos. Um, I bet you ours are much bigger, tastier, healthier for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you're not using the little shells. I'm talking about the big shells. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, this, you use soft shells? Yeah. 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 We... uh you, you know, we've talked about this before on our podcast that uh, we have a, a home group on Sunday nights. And a lot of times we'll have different people who come to that will bring an ingredient for tacos and we'll have taco night. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds definitely. good. Well, uh, on Friday, October 4th, 2019, you know what happened there, Dave? A world record was broken. Oh, I love world records. We're talking about tacos now. What do you think it was? Well, I don't know. I got it in front of me. You want me to say? <laughs> okay. Well, you got it in front of you. Okay. I didn't know you were reading of that much ahead, but that's okay. So I, I don't know about you, but I love comp watching competition eating events. Oh, you do really? I, do. I mean, it makes me sick, but I love watching it. It's, it's incredible what those guys and gals can eat. Have you ever done a competitive eating contest? No. I have I'm, forgotten. I'm, I'm big, but I cannot eat a lot at one time. Just this last weekend, I had forgotten all about this. When I was in junior high, our youth group uh, did a, uh, what they called a citywide, citywide razzmatazz for teenagers. And one of the events, and I'd forgotten about it, so I was, I was home in Iowa, and we were looking at old newspaper clippings. And I was in the newspaper because we had the spaghetti eating contest and wow. I was in it and it was, I don't really remember it, but yeah, you, your brain tends to block out traumatic events. Okay. I'm sidetracking here, but you, this is story. This is way before, I mean, again, this was back in the eighties. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and you know, our friend John Keck, right? You know, yeah, John. Yeah. I know okay, John. So he was our youth pastor and I was a youth sponsor. And we did an overnight for fall. We did like a fall fest overnighter. And one of the games that we did is there were five people standing, all five of us, four sponsors, and John was the last person. And we each had, we started out, the last person, first person started with a glass of water and a toothbrush and toothpaste. And they would go in there and yeah. brush their teeth. 
and they would give a swig and go out there and we would have to go on deck. Can you believe we, I'm just getting sick of it. So I decided I was the last person next to John. I put an Oreo cookie that I had in my mouth for probably 10 minutes. And by the time it got to me and I brushed and stuff and I let the Oreo cookie out, first of all, John was dry heaving anyway. It was disgusting. And when I let that out, he about lost his cookies there. And he actually drank that. It was so, I'm telling you, I think we could probably go to jail for that today. You go to. Dude, dude you know, John, uh, you know, we're talking to our listeners like they know who he is. Yeah. But John is a sick man. I worked with him at camp one time and he was, uh, he was running our snack shop. And just to gross some girls out, he took a frog that was just running wild there on the grounds and he oh. put it in his mouth the whole thing and the thing peed in his mouth <laughs> oh i'm telling you what it's stuff like that that gives you immunity for the junk that's going on around today that's right i'll bet i'll bet john has never had covid <laughs> he's had rabies and ever whatever else but <laughs> okay, let's, let's get back to this competitive eater. Yes. Okay, this world record was uh, set by Joey Chestnut. Now, Joey Chestnut is big in the hot dog, Nathan's hot dog eating contest every July 4th. I, I don't know. I've never been. I guess I don't follow that event. Okay, he devoured 82 L.A. street-style tacos in eight minutes. Now, if I'm not mistaken, street style tacos have either two or three shells to them per taco. Uh-huh. Really? So, and he ate 82 of those. And uh, can you imagine him that evening or the next day? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, well, I imagine that there's probably some way, don't you, that they that they prepare themselves, maybe coat their stomachs with something. There has to be. Ugh, I don't know. Gross. It's well, gross. Well, in, in case you get heartburn from eating too many tacos, we'll, we'll segue from that into this. Okay. We have some help for you. Uh, antacids, that's a huge industry in America. Antacids relieve heartburn or indigestion. And they work by changing the stomach acid that causes heartburn. Some common OTC antacids include Mylanta, Rolaids, and Tums. I I know what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. I uh, I eat a steady supply of Rolaids. I you just learn when when to eat. The older you get, if you want to be in pain the rest of the night, or yeah. I just don't want that. Anymore. Now, do you uh do you like <laughs> do you like the chalky ones or do you like the fruit flavored ones? I like the fruit flavored ones. Me too. Definitely, definitely. And how many do you take at a time? Probably a half a roll. Really, at a time? Yeah. Well, there's times I'll I'll take them before I'm going to eat, and then I drink some milk or water, or whatever, and then I eat, and then I take the rest of the roll afterwards wow now we uh we get them in uh, one of those big plastic bottles you know jars or whatever right, right. and i just dump a bunch into my hand afterwards and devour yeah. them i i read you know there's no uh it isn't like aspirin where they say you know have a recommended dose so yeah, yeah. i can see there's a support group for taking too many roll aids <laughs> what are you probably, here for? we're I'm probably gonna have to join in a <laughs> oh, well, anyway folks i hope that you really enjoyed this discussion on tacos i hope that it's made you hungry for tacos and if so we ought to all get together and just have a big taco night yeah it's, come on tell us again dave our motto give us our motto one more time tonight yes this is tacos yes that's yeah. right and listen if you have if you have a favorite recipe or a favorite type of taco or maybe a favorite memory that you have at Taco Bell, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead and comment uh, somewhere on, on the platform in which you're listening. And we would like to hear those, uh, those ideas. Yeah. Just let it slip out. Yeah. The... Yeah. <laughs> just let it slip out. <laughs> but Hey, Andy, we all want to thank you tonight. We thanks, also want to thank. Yeah. Thanks, Andy. We want to thank our listeners for being with us during this episode. Please don't forget to comment, share this podcast with your friends. Hey, why don't you message us on our two days podcast, Facebook page, or our two days podcast, Instagram page. We'd be happy to talk with you. We promise we don't allow our research team to do the comments. We'll answer you personally. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and we, you know what? We don't let our research crew do that. We do that ourselves. I just said that. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Dave. Hey, Dave. Yeah. I just want everybody to know that we don't let our research team do that. We do that ourselves. Yeah, thanks. If you've listened to this podcast for any amount of time, you know that I've done that in the past several times. It's been a while, but I just wanted to see if Dave was paying attention. <laughs> hey, help us uh, increase our podcasting viewership this week, if you would. Share this podcast with your friends. Um, do whatever you need to do to, you know, hold a poster up and say, listen to the Two Days podcast. Do you know that this last Sunday, I was speaking at a church in Iowa. Yes. And before I started the message, I said, hey, I just want to do a shameless promo. If you'd like to listen to podcasts, listen to the Two Days podcast. So, hey, I, I took the opportunity to promote that. Well, I listened to you even preach. Oh, did you really? I did. Wow. It was the, it was the best 25 minute nap I've had in a long <laughs> time. No, it was good. Well, it thanks, was good. Dave. I, I took notes and all the notes were like what not to say here and what not to do there. And, and it was, you know, it was good. I really, I really appreciated it. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. You know, any way I can help. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was good. So anyway, Hey, until next time, and there will be a next time. Yes. We threaten you. We promise you. Unless Jesus comes back. Yeah, then Dave will do it by himself. <laughs> oh, Dave, no. Just remember that two days are always better than one.